Hi everyone, welcome to Sprint. My name is Liam Crilly, Product Manager here at Nginx. Uh, I will be talking today about Nginx Open Source, Nginx Plus. Joining me, we have Tom. And I'm Tom Gamble. I'm a Product Manager in charge of Instance Manager, which we'll be coming back to towards the end of the session. Thanks, Tom. All right, so let's get underway. We are at the beginning of Sprint. We're going to be talking about moving from initial deployment to enterprise readiness, showing both Nginx Open Source and Nginx Plus. So to set the scene, we're talking about a digital bank. This is our context. This is our demo environment that we'll see a little later. Uh, we've got a digital only bank concept. We're going to provide fast financial services, savings, checking, payment transactions, the usual stuff. Um, we've got to make sure that we're industry compliant. We've got to make sure that we're reliable, secure, and fast. And so our APIs, our apps, user interfaces have all got to have high quality, high performance user experience, and they've got to be secure. So let's look at how Nginx is going to be deployed to help with this digital banking environment. So introducing, first of all, the Nginx Open Source API Gateway. Um, we're going to deploy API gateways at the edge between our mobile apps and our web apps and the, uh, the core banking services. And then we've got another API gateway that sits between those uh, customer client-facing services and our back-end systems, maybe even our mainframe systems, uh, which are going to have a bunch of different systems, CRMs, databases, uh, as well as the, the application servers and origin web servers for running the code and serving that static, stat, static assets. And so we're going to have a mix of Nginx open source running there. We're going to have our Nginx instances running load balancing to these systems and our Nginx instance running API gateway between the client and these core banking services in the middle. So what do we mean by API gateway? So we're going to be processing HTTP traffic we're going to be defining our APIs. We're going to be doing the routing of API calls. We're going to be applying rate limiting. We're going to be applying TLS levels of uh, security for encryption and, of course, end-to-end -end TLS. And we're going to be making sure that we're logging everything for compliance purposes as well. So that's our setup. Without further ado, let's go and take a look at our Nginx open source configuration to see how this guy here has been set up. And here I am on my uh, Linux platform. We've got uh, CentOS version seven, and we've got Nginx installed. Here we are uh, running the latest uh, stable build of uh, Nginx open source. Let's take a look at the configuration that we've got on this system. So in my very conventional uh, configuration directory for my proxy configuration, here is our Nginx config. First up, We've got logging format in a nice, efficient uh, key value format. So we're logging URIs, our status codes. Uh, we're also going to be logging uh, what happens if there's any uh, rate limiting exceptions. We've got rate limiting configured. We're going to be configuring uh, 20 requests a second based on the client IP address. So we could be more sophisticated, but this is nice and efficient. And if anybody exceeds that rate limit, we're going to send them back this HTTP status code 429. One thing we're going to make sure we do is if anybody arrives on port 80 to this system, we're going to send them away and tell them to come back with an HTTPS connection. So we're going to upgrade any insecure clients to HTTPS back to whatever they were requesting. And then that will bring them to this server block, which is listening on port 443 under SSL. This is our digital bank host name. Here we've got our certificate, our keys. We're going to only be supporting TLS 1.2 and a few other tweaks on our TLS ciphers and configuration to make sure that that's a strong, secure connection. Now, having previously defined that rate limit, here's where we're applying it, right? So we're going to actually allow uh, 20 requests a second, but we're going to let the first four come through for free because quite often our mobile app or our web app is going to send a short flurry of API calls. We don't want to slow those down or block them. We want to let them through. But you know, we don't expect people to be clicking more than 20 times a second, uh, making different, uh, different calls. So if they go beyond that 20 requests a second, we will start then 
not delaying, but rejecting. And you can see there's a lot of flexibility about what things, uh, how we can fine tune the rate limiting behavior of this API gateway. Here's our access log, the one we defined earlier, so that's gonna go in a separate file. And then here is some simple routing based on which backend service we're asking for. So anything for API slash deposit is gonna to go to our uh, deposits backend and anything for payment will go to our payment backend. And of course, we grow this out to all the services that we have available. And if we don't match any of those, we're gonna drop into this catch-all location. So like this will match on anything we didn't already match above. And that's just gonna send back a, a hint to say, hey, that's a 404. You might wanna try something starting with slash API. And that's as simple as that. So like 40 lines there that's configuring our very simple API gateway. And towards the bottom, we're then configuring what all these backend systems are. Now, these might be uh, based on host names. In this case, they're based on IP addresses, IP and port combinations. Uh, and we could choose what type of load balancing we want to apply here. By default, we'll get round robin. Uh, in this case, we've explicitly chosen that we're gonna choose the server that's got the least number of connections open to it right now. And that's going to give us a, a nice even weighting uh, across the two. So there we have it. That's the entire config. Let's just check this thing's up and running. So if I uh, just use uh, curl here and uh, take a look at the headers as well, it's api.digi.bank. Uh, we should get our 404 message saying, hey, try slash API. So Nginx open source configuration, API gateway, ready to go but that's not necessarily everything that we want to get done here. So when it comes to enhancing reliability, enhancing security, uh, and improving the overall observability of the system, we need to take a look at Nginx Plus. So again, we're looking at this system on the edge, and there are a few things that we might want to use Nginx Plus for to level up our overall uh, enterprise readiness for this system. So we're going to do three, uh, three things. We're going to make sure that we've got authentication turned on. We're going to validate some JSON web tokens. We're going to improve the overall reliability of the system by actively probing each of these backend systems. So our deposit system and our uh, payment system we were looking at before, we're going to send them health check probes to make sure they're still up so that we don't inadvertently send uh, requests to systems that are down. So you know, this would be uh, implementing the, the circuit breaker pattern in microservices, for example, whereby we avoid cascading failures. If we know something's down, uh, we'll just we'll not even try and say anything to it to avoid those failures going deeper and deeper in the stack. And finally, we're going to enable better observability by enabling the Nginx Plus API, which gives us a whole range of metrics, uh, not only about the health of these systems, but about the uh, the overall activity on the system itself. So we're going to go ahead and do that straight away. So back on this same system, I'm going to do a couple of things to make sure that uh, uh, we're ready to upgrade from Nginx open source to Nginx Plus. First thing we're going to do, and I've already done this, um, is um, look at the, uh, we're going to deploy um, SSL from Genex. I've got my Nginx Plus certificate uh, key pair, my certificate and my private key so that I can access the Nginx Plus uh, repository so I can install the software. Next thing I need to do is actually tell my Linux system here where, where the repository is for Nginx Plus. So this is just pulling down a file, dropping it in my repos directory that tells me where to pull Nginx Plus from. And that's it, we're ready to go. So now, again, I can uh, fix my typo. I can simply install Nginx Plus. So this is gonna bring that further up the page. We're going to pull that down. I managed to type a lot, so let me do that one more time. So if you're right, type the enter. So here we are, it's pulled down Nginx Plus. It knows that we're replacing Nginx open source with Nginx Plus, right? So we're obsolete, we're gonna, we are, Nginx Plus is obsoleting Nginx, which will be obsoleted. Make sense? Good. 
So let's do that. Just got to pull it down, install it right over the top. We're not going to lose anything. We're not going to uh, lose any traffic. We're not going to uh, uh, lose any configuration files. Everything is, uh, all I need to do is just make sure that we're, we're using the, uh, the, new, uh, the new version. So let me do a, a restart. And now we're using Nginx Plus. And if I were to make the same uh, request with uh, moving it up to the top, do my curl command. Yep, still get the same response, but now we're getting a response from Nginx, a uh, slightly different version of Nginx related to Nginx Plus. Terrific. Uh, so let's take a look at our configuration. And we'll do uh, one simple thing. Uh, no, can't the redirectory. Here's our proxy.com. Here's our configuration file. Let's drop a few of these features in place. So if I want to save my typing and do a little bit of copy and paste. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is we're going to enable down here, let's say where we're doing our sort of policy or rate limiting, let's get JOT authentication enabled and let's uh, we can specify where we're going to get our keys from. So I might pull this from my IDP. In this case, I've, I've pulled them down already. So that's authentication set. Uh, I Let's do some, uh, second thing I said that we were going to do is some health checks. So let's go do that. Now, this means that now anything that's in this definition, we're going to send those health check probes to. And maybe let's say the payment system has a special status endpoint that we can send and it will give us a health endpoint. So we can override the defaults there. And finally, we we're going to enable monitoring. So uh, for security reasons, let's listen on localhost 488 so nobody else can come and see our stats. And we'll, excuse me, where'd I go? Here, we'll turn the API on like so. All right, save that. Reload the configuration, and now let's go and uh, let's make a proper API call to a uh, deposit balance zero zero zero, and as we should, it got an unauthorized because we have not authenticated to DigiBank API's authentication realm. So straight away, NGX Plus is installed and we've got various things enabled, including job authentication for our API gateway. So a quick recap, we've upgraded NGX Open Source to NGX Plus. We've enabled JSON Web Token authentication. We've configured active health checks. So now we're probing all those backends and we'll make sure they're healthy before we send requests to them. And finally, we enable the NGX Plus API so that we get metrics, statistics about all the status codes, all the number of requests, the amount of bytes that will go through the entire system, broken down by backend system and broken down by API that we're exposing to the front end. But that's not the end of the story. Because these days, it's very common for each team to have their own API gateway as opposed to you know, being centralized or indeed for them to be uh, deployed in layers. Uh, and so when we've got an awful, uh, great number of systems to be looking after, that's where Nginx Instance Manager comes in. And I'll hand over to Tom to give you more information about that. Thank you, Liam. Nginx Instance Manager is designed to make Nginx even easier to use, configure, uh, maintain. And when we look at the setup that we have, Nginx Instance Manager can really help coordinate when we start scaling out when we start looking at managing multiple instances, both open source and plus, and also having others on the team be able to understand what's going on. Although a lot of us do understand uh, the Nginx configuration language and the inner working, sometimes that knowledge is pretty hard to pick up for others on our team. We've created a solution that allows us to show graphically, and also to configure multiple instances. And I'm gonna work with the instance that we had just set up uh, with Liam on that plus instance 
And if I drop to the command line here, I've already taken the liberty of installing the agent, but the way we would install it would just be to yum install nginx agent. It would go ahead and install it. And it's a small agent, it's six megs. And what it what the agent's gonna do is just send uh, the configuration and metrics back to the nginx manager, which also is just, <clears throat> excuse me, it's a single process that runs, so it can easily be containerized. And all of this gives us the ability really to add an API and a UI on top that allows us to push, pull configs and see metrics. This is the UI for instance manager. And we have an inventory list here. Usually when we start using that, a lot of, a lot of customers, a lot of us are also wondering what is out there? Well, how do I, how do I determine and, and see some of these instances? Because a lot of our development environments may spin up Nginx and we do have the ability to run a quick scan. I just have it set to my, default subnet and port ranges here. All right, scan. I'm gonna come back with a number of instances and it will also show me some of the CVEs that may be applicable to them. Uh, in this case, they're managed instances uh, because I already have the agent installed, but if I don't, it gives me some options also to show how to install it. We do have the ability to scan for certificates. Um, you can make these calls through APIs also and specify, I wanna know any certs expiring in the last 30 days. Uh, with that scan, if they don't have the agent, we are just looking at the default listener though. So let's go back up here to our inventory and we have our instance here. I have the ability to add tags. Now tags might not be that useful at first glance, but we do use them in a couple different ways. One is organization, but the other is we can work with OpenID Connect and other authentication schemes directly from Nginx and those can be limited to different tags. So I could have a group that could only see development uh, tagged instances and another group that only can see QA and another group that on only see production. And I can add these tags free form here. And so it gives a lot of flexibility in terms of how we want to arrange that. Let me go in and show you what the config looks like. Uh, this is our default nginx.conf and I'm gonna drop down to the proxy conf, conf file that we were just in. As you can see, it's exactly the same. As we show, we have our, uh, our certificate and key right here. We have the, um, the, the JOT key set up, and we have all of our API calls and backends already here. Uh, they are highlighted with the syntax. If we hover over, it'll give some more information. This is the same information you could find, but it's in one place and really helps people to understand what's going on behind there. We can add new include files and things like that. Also, but in this case, if we were to uh, share this config out, we could also clone it into other instances as we create them. And let me go back and speak about metrics real quick. We do have uh, very basic metrics that we show here. Um, th these are ones that come across, but we export them also to um, in a Prometheus format with Prometheus query language to Grafana. I'm going to switch over here and just show you what that looks like. This is a default uh, default dashboard that we include. And we just hit some highlights here, but each of these, now I haven't set any traffic um, on this one, but each of these can be customized. So you can combine them with other instances. You, you could really get any metrics that you want. So this takes it to the next level and allows you again to control the configuration, uh, see metrics, and with a really lightweight, easy install agent, you're able to, to coordinate larger numbers of Nginx instances and really make them easier to use. Our UI here also does include a, a Swagger UI page. So all of what I showed you, you're able to go ahead and see the details and, and really customize this to work with your own systems. In addition, we support configs that are already there, open source plus, and we also have the, we also can handle another system really owning that configuration file. So if you have another automated way of pushing out configs, Nginx Instance Manager can work with that uh, without having to be the central source of truth. So it adds a great amount of flexibility, a lot of power, and, and does make Nginx a lot easier to use. So just to summarize, that scanning can be used for new instances, the configuration management, the metrics, and we have an API that coordinates all of that. With certificate management, we have the ability to find expiring certs, and we do have API calls that can actually push those certificates and keys to the endpoints. The tagging is used for role-based access control and to handle larger numbers of instances. 
and we have a lot of compatibility with your existing tools. So it's not going to force you to choose one or another. You're able to really plug them in and use as little or as much of the solution as you want. And finally, it's a simple Linux service and a package install. So this means it natively runs in a container since it is just a single process that runs. We usually use systemd in full systems, but there's a lot of flexibility there. We support SE Linux. We support the latest OSs um, and very compatible. For next steps, we want you to enjoy the rest of Sprint. We have many other demo sessions and workshops coming up today and also for our day three. With Nginx Plus and Nginx Instance Manager, we have 30-day trials that are available. The links are here, but they're also in the resources section on the Sprint portal. So if you go there, you should be able to see all of our resources to learn more about both products and also to start a free 30-day trial. We want to thank you very much for joining us today and hope you enjoy the rest of Sprint.